thrill seekers and Heidi Ho to you. And that was the song Spot Goes to Town. And it was written by Jim Crane about his cat. And Jim Crane was the guitarist for Starvation Army. But Jim and I had a band together with Sean Saley, also of Star Starvation Army, and sometimes Paul Hooray of the band Bongo's Jungle Party. And we would play uh, like these kind of surf instrumental songs, including songs that we made up, including that one by Jim Crane. Uh, before hardcore bands played and, and that was an Eric Nipplehead project song and I also covered it on my first Dementia 13 album but I failed to give Jim Crane proper writing credit and I apologize to you Jim Crane for doing that uh, I'm sorry the the record never made any money anyway so it doesn't doesn't really make that much difference but I should have given you credit and once more, a reminder that I will be in Europe in September, and the dates are appearing on your screen. I will be in Finland, Germany, the, um, Belgium, and England this time. And the dates, as I said, are on your screen. You can also go to the URL hardcorezen.info slash events for more information and links that you can click on. And I even included the information below on this video in the video description, although you can't click on the links there. I don't know how to make that happen, but if somebody can tell me uh, how to make clickable links there, uh, I'd be glad to, to know. But anyway, it's down there and there's your information. So I got a question uh, the other day and it was about home altars. And I get questions like this from time to time. Not, not that often, but every once in a while somebody asks me about this sort of stuff. And I thought it might be worth doing a video about it. Uh, so let me start off by showing you what I got inside by way of an altar. So here we go. Okay, this is the only thing I have in my house that could ever pass for an altar, a home altar. It's above a, a little door here that goes to a closet that goes under the stairs. And then there's this little overhangy thing on top of it that we put some decorations on. The Buddha statue is something that my wife had before I ever met her, and I don't know why she has it. And on it, you can see a, a little Buddha keychain that used to have a, a light on it, and then a little, I don't know if you can tell, there's a little tiny other Buddha sitting there in Buddha's lap. Uh, the orange thingy it contains some of my mother's ashes. Uh, they, uh, the other thing, that's a first place prize that Ziggy got in uh, Doggy Obedience School because he was such a good boy. Uh, there's a Frida Kahlo candle. My wife is of Mexican descent. Her parents are Mexican. Uh, and, and that's a Mexican cultural thing. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. I'm not even sure if she knows what you're supposed to do because I asked her one time and she didn't seem sure. But I think you're supposed to light it and pray for something. And then that little green book is a book of sutras that I bought at Tokain Temple where we used to have our retreats in Japan. And it's something you can get at pretty much any temple in Japan, these little books of, of sutras. And they're in Japanese, of course. They're not in English. Uh, people keep asking me where they can buy one of those. And really, I don't know. I, I think maybe Zen Shuji in Little Tokyo in Los Angeles might sell an English one. I'm not sure. But... Uh, but that's mine, and I've had it for, God, decades, I, I, a long, long time. It's all tattered and stuff. So there, there you go. That's my uh, so-called altar, such as it is. So there, that was it. That's, that's what I got that passes for an altar. As you can see, it's not much. I had a slightly less half-assed altar, or perhaps one would say a slightly more full-assed altar. Uh, at uh, an apartment I used to live in a long time ago where I set up a Buddha statue. It was on a mantelpiece of a non-working fireplace, if I remember right. Anyway, and I set up a Buddha statue and then I put an incense burner in front of it, a Japanese-style incense burner, which is basically a little bowl with sandy, ashy stuff inside of it. And I would put incense in there, light the incense, of course, and put the incense in there and then do three bows, three full prostrations. And maybe one of these days I'll show you what those are, but I'm not going to show you on this dusty uh, uh, dust that's behind me. Uh, but, uh, but I would, would do three prostrations and then chant the Heart Sutra. And I mainly did that uh, to try to learn the Heart Sutra. And after I figured uh, that I kind of more or less memorized the Heart Sutra or got it, you know, close to memorized. 
I just stopped doing it. I got lazy about it and uh, moved out of that apartment, took, a, took apart the altar, and what I got now is the closest thing I have to an altar. So I really don't know how you set up a home altar. When I lived in Japan, I used to see home altars all the time. In fact, older houses will have this little alcove thingy, and I wish I could tell you what it was called. There's, there's, this, there's a, an actual name for it, but this little alcove thingy that was meant to make an altar in. And what I would normally see in Japanese people's houses would be usually like a framed photograph of a deceased loved one or maybe several deceased loved ones. And sometimes there would be objects in front of it, things that that, that person liked. If the person was a heavy smoker, sometimes there'd be a pack of cigarettes. I used to see bottles of sake there or bottles of beer occasionally, sometimes little cakes and things that were left as, as sort of offerings to the dead. and. I never knew much about how those things worked. It was more of a, a kind of a folk tradition, I think, than a really a religious sort of thing for most Japanese people, because Japanese people tend to be kind of non-religious. I mean, they'll go along with the forms and the, you know, the kind of outward appearance of a religion, but there's not a really strong belief behind it, usually. Not, of course, there are Japanese people who really strongly believe in their religions, but generally speaking, it's not like in, in America where you find a lot of people who really, really strongly believe in a religion. Uh, you don't find that in Japan very often. That's pretty rare. So when preparing for this video, I thought about going on the internet and looking up how do you set up a Buddhist home altar, but you could do that, so what's the point in me doing it? Uh, I just want to tell you my experience of it, which is that my sort of training didn't include a lot of what I call priestcraft. So priestcraft is learning stuff like that, learning how to set up an altar, you know, which statue goes on it, what goes on the right side, what goes on the left side, and there's a whole, I was going to say science, it isn't really science, but there's a whole tradition behind it, and, and people who know priestcraft know what's supposed to go on an altar, and know what goes on the right, and what goes on the left, and what goes in front of it, and what goes behind it, and all this stuff, and there's a, there's a whole there's a whole tradition behind it, as I said, but my training didn't have anything to do with that. Nishijima Roshi was not interested in those types of things. If I remember right, he the only thing he had that I can recall seeing in his home, in, in the apartment he lived in, uh, that approximated an altar was a little shelf with some um, little monuments to people who had passed on. And I asked him once about it, and he said, oh, those are my dead children. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't know you had dead children. I mean, he, he grew up, came of age during World War II, so, uh, you know, medicine was probably not quite as uh, you, well taken care of. What's the word? Anyway, I think a lot of people lost children in childbirth back in those days in Japan, and I assume that's what happened, but I, I never actually heard the story of his, his dead children. I think they were probably, you know, children who, who didn't make it past the, the first, you know, day or week of, of life or something. But anyway, that's a kind of common thing that one finds in uh, Japanese homes as little monuments to people who have passed on. As far as whether you should have an altar, it's kind of up to you. I mean, like I said, I don't have one, not really. Uh, I don't think it's absolutely necessary, and if you want to do it right, you should probably ask somebody other than me. I don't know how important it is. It's not important to me to have an altar at home. It doesn't, you know, it's just, it's a decoration, and, and I don't, I don't do much with it. Like I said, I used to use one for practice, but that was because I was leading ceremonies and I thought I'd better learn, you know, to do them without looking at the cheat sheet all the time. But if you're not doing something like that, I don't, if it has value to you, I was going to say I don't know how much value it has. If it has value to you, 
then that's great and and you should do it and you can probably look up a thing online i know that the um what is they called them the nichiren shoe guys i can't i can't think of what they're called and if i find out what they're called i'll put it on the screen but there there's a soka gakai that's what they're called soka gakai and they're an organization of nichiren buddhists and one of the things they do is that they have altars uh, for the Lotus Sutra in their homes and when I wanted to make something to memorialize my mom I went to a Soka Gakkai place in Dallas Texas which is my parents were living near Dallas at the time and well my mom wasn't living anymore because she just died but uh, I went to the Soka Gakkai place in Dallas and bought one of those things and had to pretend <laughs> I wanted it for Soka Gakkai purposes. I slightly lied. Well, I didn't lie. I just didn't tell him. Anyway, whatever. Uh, I did it under false pretenses. Uh, and I bought one of the uh, Butsudans, I think is what they call it. And it's a little plastic thing that you can enshrine your, your staff. I think you enshrine a piece of the Lotus Sutra in there and maybe some pictures of, of people that, that have passed on. I'm not sure what they do with it. You have to ask Ahsoka Gakkai. Go ask Tina Turner. She's in Ahsoka Gakkai. Maybe she knows what to do with one of those things. But that's one place where you can find the stuff fairly readily if you're looking for one in the U.S. And maybe they'll tell you how to set it up if you want. But but it would be the Nichiren shoe or the Soka Kai version of how to set it up. And, you know, that might not be the same as what you want. I don't know. But there you go. That's what I know about altars. I don't really know the priestcraft stuff. I, I, I feel a little guilty. I actually ordained four people as priests, but because I don't know any priestcraft stuff, as far as I'm concerned, those ordinations are kind of iffy. <laughs> so if you meet somebody who's ordained by me, uh, they got a kind of iffy ordination. But anyway, uh, I'm not doing iffy ordinations anymore. I'm not ordaining priests at all, so don't ask. But anyway, because uh, I don't know the priest craft, I don't feel like qualified to, to use that word priest or to, or to ordain people as priests. But that's neither here nor there. So that's what I know about Buddhist altars. Not much, as it turns out. So I hope this was useful to you to know that I don't know anything anyway if you want to help me uh, do more stuff and learn more about Buddhist altars you can go to the URL you're screening you're screening on the C below that you're seeing on the screen below which is hardcorezen.info slash donate that is hardcorezen.info slash donate there you will find links to my PayPal and my patreon accounts those are my main and usually only ways uh, of making a living and getting haircuts and uh, and I really appreciate your support Support. But as always, this is offered for free, so you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Hey Ziggy, how you doing? As you can see, he came outside this time, but uh, he's sitting in the shade instead of being out in the sun. Uh, he's probably smarter than me. All right, Ziggy, we'll see you later. All right, bye.